Atlanta now laying three and a half as former head coach and new Pittsburgh Steelers offensive coordinator Arthur Smith comes to town. Uh, man, do I love this spot for the Steelers? Steelers are plus 156 on the money line, Atlanta minus 186. 42 and a half is the total. I mean, Sean, we've been talking about this game for a long, <laughs> long time, and now we're getting the full three and a half. We're oh. we're looking like donkeys Sounded here. like my wife getting the full three and a half. We're looking ride. like donkeys here. Oh, it's a little cold, and uh, donkeys in here with the taking. Th- I mean, this is two games in a row. I'm taking three and a half, Sean. What am I doing? I, I I'm sorry. I I got to see something from this Falcons team. Yes, they could. St- I mean, if they lose this game. They have the Eagles and Chiefs in their next two games. There's certainly a little bit of pressure there. Plus, they drafted a quarterback in the first round. That was puzzling. They just traded a third round pick for a guy they couldn't sign. I mean, long-term. let's just let's just start with some SGP staples, Ryan. Okay. One, Mike Tomlin has a dog sitting mm. there right at 60%. He's working here. Yeah. Uh TJ Watt. Do you know what <laughs> this is my favorite set? The Steelers with TJ Watt when he plays. 69, 33, and two. And and normally, you know, one defensive player uh isn't it's not like a quarterback where you have the quarterback starting record. But for TJ Watt, it, it makes is. sense. When TJ Watts is out on the field, this defense is very good. And I feel like uh, am I crazy? Like this Steelers defense is getting slept on. Not only you Big got TJ Watt, you got Minka Fitzpatrick who's healthy. You got Patrick Queen, who all the beat reporters. I mean, Tomlin was like, this guy was a, a true Steeler at heart. So great. You got Cam Hayward, Alex Highsmith, Joey Porter Jr. on the back end. Like, I mean, they have a. This is a very, very good defense that's played a lot of games together. That has a ton of continuity. You have Arthur Smith coming in. With a chip on his shoulder, um, and the Falcons have been bad week one, one and five uh, in week one since 2018. And Some of that was Arthur Smith. Yes, <laughs> and you have to go back. Um, I, I I I couldn't find uh, pre 2000 the last time uh, a quarterback started week one after tearing his Achilles the following year. I get it. Medical science has become more advanced, but an Achilles injury for an aging quarterback like Kirk Cousins is not good. Think about all the chores he's had this offseason. <laughs> Moving to the same c- the city where his in laws live. And we ha- we haven't even yeah we haven't even mentioned that clearly he got pissed off about the Penix thing. Judon is is a mercenary. He doesn't want to extend there. Already bad vibes there. I think the Steelers. Everyone dogs you know shits on Russell Wilson and mm. and Justin Fields somewhat rightly so. But I think <laughs> I think they're just going to be able to pound the rock with Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, set up a little easy play action um, like the Arthur Smith. Was created in a lab for this Pittsburgh offense, like the players on the offensive side of the ball. This is a perfect match, and you have this Falcons, this super team with a bunch of mercenaries assembling with um, Raheem Morris as their head coach. Uh, a, you know, aging quarterback coming off an Achilles that didn't play any live action. I mean, there's a world where, yeah, maybe Cousins ends up figuring it out, but is he going to hit the ground running week one? Well, I guess the argument for is that. He was in a, a system like th- I think. Just in general, there is there seems to be a general idea that certain offensive systems are just tra- like that you can just transfer from one place to the next, and it's just fine. Like it's the U.S. Army. Yeah, and I think with Kirk Cousins, a yeah, he he's had some good he's had some good moments for Minnesota, but he was playing with some elite. Skill position yeah, players Justin already. Jefferson. He was playing with an elite play, maybe one of the best McVay disciples uh, uh, up there in Minnesota. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, we we even from when the signing happened, it was like, what is this? Yeah, why are people excited? I get it. The defense has improved. That's certainly a, a reason to be optimistic. But just but find think, me the reason why you want a little bit. To why do you want to buy into this coaching staff? What what about this coaching staff? Makes you feel good about it. I I think some people are overlooking the idea that Zach Robinson just got into coaching like five years ago. I think they're overlooking <laughs> that Jimmy Lay cratered yes. the University of Washington program. And as you pointed out, Raheem Morris has showed us how to win four games in a season before. Did I mention Atlanta Falcons most losses 150 to one? 
is an absolutely <laughs> splendid way to spend a pizza bet. I mean, obviously well, and, we're and taking the Steelers. Yeah, so. and uh, Jalen Warren has been limited in practice with the hamstring. He claims he's definitely going to play. To ah. me, that doesn't that doesn't change the the outcome. Doesn't matter. Cordero yeah. Patterson's there. We saw he still got the wiggle in the preseason. Yeah, Cordero Patterson <laughs> revenge game. They're gonna they're gonna, there's gonna be some weird trick play with Justin Fields. All right, you know what? We gotta make sure we bet first touchdown Cordero Patterson kickoff <laughs> return for a touchdown. Yeah, let's it's go. gonna be we're gonna have an explode. Uh, I mean, if that game starts with a Cordero Patterson kickoff return touchdown in the dome, I might lose my mind at the Westgate show. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that would just be an electric moment. No, it will. All right, so let's make sure we get the first touchdown down on Cordero Patterson.